the show. There you go. You can ring your bells again. <laughs> Friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, July 26, 2020. It is good to be with you again this week while Pastor Moira is on a much needed vacation. She will be back in the office late this week and back in worship next Sunday. I hope you are enjoying our wonderful Wisconsin summer but I also hope you are being careful. COVID-19 continues to be a real risk. Because symptoms take a while to appear, it is easy to pass on the virus even when you feel well. So please continue to practice good hand hygiene washing your hands often, or using sanitizer when you can't, and wearing a mask when you cannot maintain a good preventative distance from others. While our medical professionals have learned a lot about how to treat the virus, we are far from either a simple treatment or a vaccine. We are going to have to figure out how to live with this virus, which is going to require flexibility, creativity, and compassion. We can do this, but only if we remember that we are in this together our lives and health bound up with one another. A few parish announcements as we begin. At their recent meeting, the Black Creek Women's Guild voted to cancel the rummage sale for this year. The difficulty in finding volunteers who would be comfortable to work. And considering the current situation, the decision was made to cancel and look forward to resuming in June of 2021. <coughs> Excuse me. The fall feast, however, is scheduled for Sunday, October 4th from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. Planning is underway for the event to be as it has been in the past. <coughs> but we will need to be flexible depending on how the virus progresses or hopefully doesn't in our area, including increasing the number of meals served to go. Stay tuned for more information after the guild's planning uh, planning meeting in August. <coughs> Excuse me. Our July year of giving focus is United Church Camps Incorporated, UCCI. Because of COVID-19, all activities and programs have been canceled until at least Labor Day at both Moon Beach and Pilgrim Center. UCCI is an incredible ministry offering folks an opportunity to connect with the beauty of creation and deepen their faith as well. Your gifts to UCCI help continue to provide these ministries and scholarships to all UCC churches, church members at both facilities. You can make a check to the church and put UCCI in the memo section. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are living through a major social upheaval. 
at the heart of the protests, though, are questions that ask us as individuals, a country, and indeed the world, to deal with things that many would rather ignore. The racism and bigotry in our history. Our faith in Jesus demands that we face truth of our past, the racism towards Native people on whose land we live, Blacks who were bought and sold as property, and others who were and are discriminated against based on skin color, age, gender, sexual identity, economic status, and more. Our faith also demands that we work together to listen, to hear, and to find ways to build a more just world for all of God's children in every place around the world. And our faith demands that we allow no excuse or justification for racism and bigotry against anyone. It is against everything that Jesus taught and all the ways he asked us to live. We are called to love and trust and speak out against the many connected isms that destroy and dehumanize others and ourselves. Thank you for your ongoing generosity and faithfulness. If you would like, you may continue to send your contributions by mail. Addresses where you can mail them are included in the email and print materials. And now the bells chime. We begin worship together. We begin with a time of quiet. <clears throat> In the middle of everything happening in our lives and in the life of the world, we pause. We remember that we are always, always in the presence of the holy, loved and cherished as we are. If you're comfortable doing so, take a few slow breaths allowing your body to relax. Remember that you can trust in God's arms of grace that support you through everything that life brings. Remember that God created you, knows your name, and loves you more than you can possibly imagine. And let us pray. Gracious God, we come together. We are mindful of the love and grace that you extend to us all. Your presence at this time is so needed with the upheaval and conflict that surrounds us each day. Grant us strength and courage so that we can face each day refreshed in order to serve others in the spirit of love for all of mankind. 
Amen. Our first hymn is the familiar In the Garden, written by Charles Austin Miles in 1912. Miles trained as a pharmacist, but had a revelation of faith and became a hymn writer, working eventually in gospel music publishing for almost 40 years. This song, the story of Mary Magdalene, overwhelmed with grief in the garden and mistaking the risen Jesus for the gardener, came to Miles in a dream after he had been reading the uh, account of the resurrection in John 20. It is a powerfully intimate hymn, the encounter between Mary and Jesus, her desire to stay with him, and his insistence that she go back to the other disciples to share with them the good news. Miles also wrote the tune specifically for his words. It has become a common funeral hymn, but it is about our personal relationship with Jesus, what it is like to walk and talk with him, to know his presence and power in our lives. It can be found in our New Century Hymnal, at number 237.
trusting in God's grace and love. We confess our sins knowing that God will receive us, forgive us, and inspire us in our lives as Jesus' disciples. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, allow our eyes to see what wrongs we do. Allow our minds to understand what causes us to turn away from you and a life you would have us live. We know that we do wrong, but our ego and human nature are sometimes greater than our faith. Forgive our faults and guide our steps in this world of uncertainty and anxiety. Amen. Hear the good news. Through God's grace and in Jesus' love, we are forgiven. Go now and live as forgiven and forgiving people. Thanks be to God. We now pray and enjoy this week for the beauty of God's creation revealed to us each day, the joy of careful gatherings of family and friends, the faith and strength of frontline and emergency workers and all those whose labors allow us to live the relationships and networks of support and care that are coming out of dealing with COVID-19. Other joys you are celebrating. We pray and concern this week for Brad Lehman from Trinity receiving lung cancer treatments. Read a bus whose cancer has returned yet again. Michelle Arnold from Black Creek receiving cancer treatments. Al Danielson from Cecil and all who have recently tested positive for COVID-19 and a prayer that it does not spread further in our small communities. Emily, sister of Mackenzie Lehman, recovering from a jet ski accident. Philip Hurt from Cecil, continuing to recover from his car accident. Lindsay Pinkley from Black Creek, who has had additional surgery on her pelvis after her car accident last December. All those struggling with addiction and their mental health. Caitlin Kelly, age 22, member of the Menominee tribe missing from Shawano since June 16th. Her son is safe with extended family near Kashina. Army Specialist Vanessa Gillian killed at Fort Hood, Texas after reporting being sexually harassed by one of her fellow soldiers. That the voices of the protesters demanding human rights and real justice might be heard through the noise of those who are intent on causing chaos and that this might be a time of real and meaningful change for our country and the world towards true equality for all God's children. Other concerns you 
are struggling with. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come today with thanksgiving and hope for all the joys of our lives. We thank you for the beauty of your creation in that we are blessed to live in a place where we see it revealed to us each day. We pray with thanks for our communities and our congregations that provide us with support and encouragement, with people to share the journey of life with us. Fill us with patience and compassion as we learn to live with this virus. Remind us that our job is not to judge, but to tend to our own actions and behaviors that together we might protect our own health and the health of our communities. Help us learn deep in our hearts and souls what is truly important in our lives and in the life of the world. Help us support our communities and small businesses and advocate on behalf of all who do the work that is essential to our lives, all those who stand in harm's way on our behalf. Be with and keep safe the soldiers, sailors, firefighters, police officers, first responders, emergency medical technicians, utility workers, garbage collectors, and transit drivers. Remind us of the work that farmers, farm workers, factory employees, truck drivers, postal workers, and delivery workers do for us and for the world. Remind us that the work of fighting this virus is not done, that it is all a real threat to our collective health. Be with all those who care for others in hospitals, clinics, nursing and care facilities, and child care programs. Give them strength, courage, and all the supplies they need to safely do their work. Be with those who lead and make decisions about our collective health, creating and carrying out public policy. Bring our hopes to all who are struggling with worry and anxiety and the ongoing effects of the virus. Be with those who felt and still feel isolated, with those who are overwhelmed, and with those for whom this was a time of renewal and hope. Be with our teachers and school staff and administration as they try to find a way to educate as safely and carefully as possible in the coming year. Help them as they balance all the things that compete for importance and give them the courage and flexibility to embrace what the future holds. Help us in the middle of life's storms to be joyful. Remind us of your presence in the ever-changing world for friends and family, for community, hope 
and connections for dependence on you and on one another. Help us, O oh God, to be in solidarity with those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for Brad Lehman, Michelle Arnold, Rita Buss, and all who are receiving treatment for cancer. We pray for Al Danielson, and all those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 for their health and the health of every community around the world. We pray for Philip Hurt as he continues to recover from his accident, for Lindsay Pinkley and Emily as they both recover from surgery and be with all who are in need of your healing grace. We pray for your healing love to be poured out on all in need. Heal their bodies, if that is possible, O oh God. But surely you are able to make them whole in spirit, one with you. Be with all, O oh God, who struggle with broken and hurting relationships, with the joys and challenges of being in community, with the struggles of addiction, anxiety, and mental health. Be with the family of Caitlin Kelly as they wait for news of her whereabouts. And we pray she might be returned to those who love her soon and safely. Comfort all those who mourn, O oh God, with all who are struggling with grief and loss, whether that grief is new or many years old. Comfort all who mourn and remind us all of your promise of life everlasting. Be with the families of all those who are victims of sexism, racism, discrimination, and hatred. Help us to do our part in working to challenge and end the sin of racism and white supremacy. Guide us and give us strength that we might open our hearts and minds and spirits to your presence, your power, and your grace, O oh God. Help us that we might find the true peace and grace that can never be taken from us. These and all our prayers we entrust to God who knows us better than we know ourselves. For God created us, loves us, and claims us as God's very own. We pray all things with the words that Jesus taught his first disciples saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue reading in Genesis, finding Jacob with Laban, his mother's brother. There, Jacob meets the love of his life, Rachel, and makes plans to marry her only to eventually be tricked by his uncle. Reading from Genesis chapter 29, verses 15 through 30 adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel. He said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, this is not done in our country. Giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you at the other, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. Now Laban gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel to be her maid. So Jacob went in to Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. He served Laban for another seven years. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the living of this scripture. It is interesting for me to have such unique and inspirational biblical stories in two consecutive chapters from the book of Genesis. Last week, we spoke about Jacob's ladder from chapter 28, and from chapter 29, we read about Jacob and his marriage to Rachel and Leah. Both of these stories have specific things 
that they want to convey to the reader, but I believe they have a common thread, which I will speak to a little later. Let's first take the story of Jacob's marriage to Rachel and Leah and put it in a modern day scenario. Just as Jacob went to his uncle Laban to ask for his daughter's hand in marriage, many of us in a similar manner have asked our future in-laws for permission to marry their daughter or ask for her hand in marriage in their presence. It wasn't too long ago that traditionally the bride's parents would also offer a dowry. In Jacob's case, it was a little different. Jacob offered his employment to his future father-in-law for seven years. Let that sink in. Seven years. Would you men who are married have also done the same if you needed to work for seven years in order to marry your bride. And for the ladies, would you have waited seven years in order to marry your future husband? Obviously our world and culture is much different from the days when Jacob was alive. But Jacob models an attitude and a faith that we can all appreciate and aspire to. Jacob's faith, as we learned last week, when he had the dream where he climbed the ladder and saw God cemented his faith in God and God's care. I earnestly believe this faith is shown in the dedication and effort that Jacob showed not only in the seven years that he gave, but the 14 years that he served for what he felt was the greatest thing he could have in this world to be with Rachel. These stories are truly an analogy of what our faith and devotion should be for accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior and God as the creator of us all. As we view our own faith, our beliefs, and the love we have for our Lord and Savior, what type of behavior, attitude, or approach do we take on a day-to-day -day basis to suggest to others how our faith makes us feel? I believe we do not have to look any further than in the example given by Jacob as he undertook the 14 years he served Laban. Jacob completed his 14 years as it says in the reading, as if it were only a few days. Jacob did this work without complaint and with joy in him his heart knowing what to expect at the end of his efforts. We also know what we will achieve on the day our earthly life ends and we are able to be with our Lord in heaven. But while we are here, even in the midst of what we are presently facing, can't we also have joy 
in our hearts? Can't we also use our faith and love of God as a springboard to carry us through each and every day of our lives? Amen. Just as Jacob had dedicated his life for what was in his mind, the ultimate goal, the ultimate desire, our ultimate desire, our ultimate goal as Christians on a daily basis is to serve God in a joyful manner, to serve our fellow man and woman with love and respect, if we all did that, wouldn't that be a beautiful world? Again, amen. Let us pray together. Giving Lord, at this moment in time, let us recommit ourselves to continuing the mission that you had started so long ago. Do not let the chaos and stress of our lives stand in our way of doing your work. Be always the shining example of what you would have us be. And let us walk in your light all the days of our lives. Amen. Our closing hymn is Blessed Assurance, written by Fanny Crosby in 1873. Crosby was born in 1820 and became blind just six weeks old. Eventually, she attended the New York Institute for the Blind and becoming a teacher. She began writing hymns in 1864, eventually completing more than 4,000 hymns about 60 of which are still in wide use. It is set to the tune of Assurance by Phoebe, by, me, by Phoebe Knapp. This is a hymn about the promise of God's grace made known to us through Jesus and our response of praising God every day of our lives. It can be found in our new century hymnal at number 473.
and now receive the benediction. May you know the unity of our parish in all its different places and forms that guides and sustains us each day. May you know that God's incredible love for you is real and powerful. And may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the presence of the Holy Spirit give you courage and peace and hope today and in all the days ahead. Amen.